You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the Cricket Podcast for part two of our show. We will be turning our attention to the new kid on the block, Major League Cricket. Before we do that, just a shout out to our sponsor, Manscapes. You can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code CRICKETPOD at manscaped.com. Go and buy the tools that you need to look after your family jewels. I forgot what the, the actual phrase for that was. But anyway, basically the thing is... You the best over, tool for your oh, family jewels or something? That's, yeah. that's the one. That's the one. Um, you can get over there, get your Lawmer 4.0, your performance package, all of that gear. Uh, take it from us. It's top stuff. And uh, we're happy to bring it to you. 20% off with the code Cricket. Pod, Max, Major League Cricket is here. Can you tell us what it is, or do you want me to tell you what it is? I can, I can tell you what it is. It's, it's simple, Jack. We're, we're turning the land of the free into the land of the free hit. It's franchise oh! cricket, and it's in, the, it's in America. It's back, baby. After, um, after a couple of attempts about twenty years ago, um, finally they're doing it with a thing. With a you know T Twenty cricket, which actually exists now. When they first tried it, it didn't even exist. So now it exists. A bit better. Um, it's a six-team tournament, six franchises, um, with some names that you may find familiar if you follow the uh, the IPL. Um, and they will be playing for uh, for a few weeks um, in at the end of July. Uh, there's a it's the, what's it? It's a, a round roll. Each each team plays each other once. There'll be a a, a four-team knockout eliminator IPL style before moving on to a, a final it's all being played at two stadiums uh, one just outside Dallas and the other in North Carolina and um, and there's some big names aren't there Jack there's some big boys coming out to play big big names yeah real big names and um, what we're going to do in this part of the show I think we're going to we're going to give a one minute summary to each teams uh, and then we've got some questions because there, there's some bigger prep questions about what Major League Cricket is trying to do how it fits in i think it's interesting i mean i don't know if you know how they placed the teams max um what what they've basically done and i think it, it's actually a really interesting strategy they have effectively looked at where there is already a domestic viewing audience for cricket yeah. around the country and they have placed the team is that from willow in, cricket stuff i think it could be willow cricket there's some espn cricket as well isn't there they've they've looked at this um i mean obviously some of them are, are pretty obvious new york los angeles probably wouldn't have thought seattle would be up there um yeah. to, to to be honest um and they've, they've you know they've placed the the teams there and i think they're really making a play i think this is why it, it is quite interesting and could potentially be quite exciting and, and probably why a lot of money has gone into it they are making a play to establish this as a, a tournament that makes money domestically this is not just one of those tournaments that is built to try and tap into the Indian market. Like the people behind this genuinely think that there is a sustain, sustainable business model in playing cricket in America. Um, so it will be interesting, I think, to see how that develops and to see whether that has any repercussions, knock-on effects for an international team down, down the road. Um, if you want like a, a case study, and I, I don't think this quite fits, but they talk about major league soccer um, and how they, they established, I think it was 20, it's about 20 years old, Major League Soccer, isn't it? And I think by most metrics, that's now more popular than ice hockey Yes, in, yeah. in the US. So it's like the fourth I, I most popular sport, isn't it now? Yeah, I think it's highly unlikely that a franchise tournament like this will make waves that way and have that cut through. But it's not inconceivable that it generates some level of interest and, and, and can be a a self-sustaining operation and i think that'd be quite exciting anyway max um we have six teams that we want to get through uh, should we start with new york let's am i new york um so there's the, the preface this slightly there are six teams in the tournament as you said four of them are owned by ipl franchises two of them are kind of tie-ins with australian state sides yeah. mi new york uh, are not one of those they are <laughs> they are a, 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 a mumbai indians own franchise um with a raft of players that you will recognize from that Absolutely team before we do be <laughs> before we talk about before we talk about mi's players we'll do the traditional fact the the cricket podcast destination fact uh new york max nicknamed the big apple do you know why it's nicknamed the big apple uh, is it because their apple trees are particularly large? 
No, it isn't. It's because back in the 20s and 30s, um, it's not really clear whether it was jazz musicians or jockeys used to talk about going to New York as being a big earner where there'd be lots of money. Apple was slang for money. Big Apple uh, is oh. is where that comes from. So little little fact for you like, there. Like the uh, big smoke, but a better version. Kind of, yeah. Uh, they're going to be captained by Kyron Pollard. They've got Tim David on the train, Rabada, Nicholas Puran, and of course, Max... Jason Berendorf will be turning out for, <laughs> for MI New York. Uh, I've, I've highlighted a local player, Stephen Taylor, as somebody to have a look at. I think he was the first pick in the draft, or their first pick in the draft. He's got a decent international record, so it's someone who's fairly established for them, and it'll be interesting to see how he goes against stiffer competition. And I think that'll be an interesting dynamic in this tournament as well. Six overseas, five homegrown players. There are going to be a few mismatches. Now, not all of the overseas players, uh, not all of the homegrown players are, are Americans. Um, a lot are kind of American through uh, parent or American through residency. Um, so there's, you know, there's, a, there's, there's basically a lot of traditional cricket country imports into this tournament. So I, I don't think it's going to be literally guys from New York playing against guys like Amrik Nokia. I don't think it'll be that significant a difference. But it'll be interesting to see how they go. I think overall, though, um, I would say Mumbai Indians, New York, and they've got to get a better name than that. MI New York or My New York is just so dumb. Yeah, well, they did the case. So many they? good names that you could have done. You could have New York Big Apples. That would have been great. The Big Apples. Um, but they're not called that. They're called My New York. I think they're going to be a pretty decent team. Obviously, they only play about a handful of matches, so you'll never know which way this is going to go. And I'm, I'm, I'm very loath to make any predictions. But I would say good team. Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just looking at the squad now, and it's mental. I mean, you didn't even mention Trent Bolton, Rashid Khan. <laughs> <laughs> I missed Rashid Khan. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, no, they're 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 obscene. Um, Maybe they'll end up being a touch light on the batting because they're possibly a bit, um, a bit well oriented to the middle order. But then they have got Stephen Taylor to open the batting, and he's you know he's uh, basically the guy for for the US. So um, yeah, they look strong. They're um, yeah, but like you say, it's a six game tournament, so literally anything can happen. Uh, who do you want to do next, Max? Next team. Uh, let's let's do well. Since we've gone from we've gone from um, MI franchise, let's go to um, let's go to the Super Kings, shall we? Um, the other another big storied franchise in IPL cricket has taken over Texas, the Texas Super Kings, um, and um, the the fact for Texas, it's the, got the world's largest urban bat colony, Texas. Which would um, I would say make it a pretty good place to host cricket, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely. Ha yeah. ha ha ha. Um, captained by Faf Duplessis, um, he's joined by a, a raft of other Super Kings legends, and they all fit the bill for what the Super Kings like to do. We know what they like to do, don't we, Jack? Pick old blokes. Um, <laughs> no one older than Imran Tahir at forty-three, <laughs> and DJ Bravo at thirty-nine. Um, they also have Devon Conway and Killer Miller, so there's a, there's a good um, a good smattering of of old favourites in the yellow there. Uh, not less star power the ball, I think, um, but they do have um, Juan Rusty Theron, um, who's also fits the Super King bill because he's 37, but he's got IPL pedigree. Um, he's a, a South African and was in the South African side around in the 2010s. And they also have a, a guy called uh, Milind Kumar who has 78 not out against England for Delhi in a tour match. So um, that's uh, that's some of their domestic players who aren't domestic that they'll be looking to make a splash. But yeah, I mean they look they look um, they look like an all right side. They'll be hoping their openers do a lot of the heavy lifting now. I would have thought. But if if Faf continues his IPL form, then he'll do it all on his own. I like they're, they're officially going to be based at Grand Prairie Stadium, which is a they great are. name for a yes. thing. I've also seen some um, cowboy hat merchandise, and I really hope that's the official cap that they wear in games. Um, I'd, I'd love to see a cricket team rocking the cowboy, cowboy hat hats, in the field. Um, let's move on to the Seattle Orcas, Max. Um, the fact for Seattle, this isn't such a good one, but it is relevant to cricket. It rains 
156 days a year in Seattle. So um, I hope the stadium that they're building has a roof. A roof. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not they, good, is it? <laughs> they, they're going to need one. Um, they they uh, tie in with the Delhi Capitals, so you'll see a handful of familiar faces from them. And the, the, I mean, I will say, I will say with with this side, they're not. They're probably not as gangbusters as some of the other teams. I, I love that they're called the Orcas. I think that's a great name for a team. They've got a cool a logo. Name. Yeah. With a whale with a hat and a and a <laughs> and a cricket bat. Um they will be captained by and this is slightly confusing, Wayne Parnell in in the tournament with Mitch Marsh, Quinton de Kock, Heinrich Klaassen, Sikander Razor as other names that you will recognise. Um they're Domestic player that I would flag, Harmeet Singh. Um, the guy that they took first is, is is one to look out for. But I basically don't think they're very good. I hope they do well. They're the team I support in this because yeah. Walkers are good. Um, I've been to Seattle. I quite liked it. Um, actually, I go to Vancouver. I've been to both, but I stayed in Vancouver and went to Seattle. Uh, saw a baseball game there. Saw Ichiro. That was good. Um, I, I don't expect them to do well, but... No, they look quite bad. The right. <laughs> yeah, they do look. Quite, <laughs> they genuinely they look, quite look quite bad. bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we uh, said that about match. the um, we said that about the Sunrisers franchise in South in the SA twenty, and they went and they won, won it. it. So yeah. who knows? Who who's next? Um, next up, I'm going to go Washington Freedom next um, because uh, a, a fact that I didn't go for, but is linked to your fact, is that it actually rains more in Washington than it does in Seattle. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah, but only by, um, I think it's by two centimetres a year or two millimetres a year, so actually not very much. But still, if you're, if you're going on a, based on 156 days of rain a year, uh, they've, they've once again gone for an interesting place to host cricket. But um, they, they're they're the New South Wales franchise, so uh, there were stories today about them lining up Steve Smith for next year, which would be pretty interesting. Not ideal for winning a T20 tournament, but quite good for building cricket in the US, I'd have thought. And they've gone pretty heavy in with the bowling. They've got Amrish Norkir and they've got Hasaranga. And I assume they will be far too good for anyone who plays cricket um, uh, domestically in America. But to balance things out, they're also captained by Moises Enriquez. So um, that's that's an interesting one. I think I'd probably rather have Wayne Parnell, to be honest. It's a close run thing. Um, and then with the bat... The main guys are Glenn Phillips and Josh Felipe. So all I can assume is they just got down to PH in the player catalogue and got bored <laughs> and shut the laptop. Um, uh, the uh, the local guys, they've got Sarab Netravalka, who's top of the charts wicket-wise for the USA. Um, and he's he's been with the guy on Amazon Warriors, so he's uh, he's got a bit of a bit of pedigree. So that'll be um, interesting. Um, but the actual the actual fact I went for for Washington, not the rain, was that one of the gargoyles on the National Cathedral, Jack, um, is Scott is a sculpted head of Darth Vader. Did you know that? Did not know that. No, that's an interesting Did not one. Know that. So um, yeah, yeah, I guess they'll be hoping the force is with them or something. Insert Star Wars joke here. Back to you in the studio. Uh, back to me in the studio for my final team, the San Francisco Unicorns, probably carrying w w one of the better names. I was going to say the best name. One of the better names into the comp. Um, did you know San Francisco is the birthplace of jeans? As in there denim? That's the fact. Yeah, denim. So the blue, blue denim jean was invented in San Francisco by Levi Strauss, a guy named Jacob Davis, who mm. wanted a material that was good for being a gold mine. Uh, for gold mine. <laughs> oh, really? oh, is that what it was for? Okay. Yeah, that's apparently. Dur durable yet comfortable. Um, mm. I bet it's one of those things where if you look into it, that isn't true, but it's a great story. And yep. that's, that's you know, where it's going from. They're down a gold mine. No. Uh, they're captained by Aaron Finch um, and our, another one of the teams with a, an Aussie tie-in. They're tied in with Victoria. So you'll see a lot of the coach staff and backroom people coming over for that. Uh, also a few few Aussies knocking around the place too. Um, the big one, Marcus Stoinis, he's there, the Stoin, um, playing for the Unicorns. Finn Allen, Matt Wade. Harris Ralph and domestic player Liam Plunkett will also be turning out for the Unicorns. He was on the show fairly recently, if you want to go back and, and listen to an interview with him. Ross had a chat with him. Um, 
so yeah, there we go. I, I, I think the interesting thing about this team is they've kind of loaded up on domestic players that have lots of experience not in America. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that balances out. Potentially, it'll work quite well. I think there'll be less of a gap between their worst player and best player than some of the other teams. Will that help them with the tournament? I have absolutely no clue. I'm just along for the ride. Uh, <laughs> the unicorn. The unicorn ride. Um, last team, Max. Last team. It's the um, the Los Angeles Knight Riders. Um, you will recognise that name from such examples as the Trinbago Knight Riders, the Kolkata Knight Riders. Um they have some familiar Knight Riders faces, funnily enough. Um, they're captained by Sunil Narine, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Um, if you want a man to lead by example in the field, um, look no further than anyone but Sunil Narine. Um, <laughs> he's currently got an interesting schedule because Surrey made it to finals day of the Blast on, um, uh, on, su- on Sunday. Um, so he's currently in Texas. His plan, he flew out um yesterday i think he's then going to play the game on friday fly back on saturday play in the final day on sunday and then fly straight back to texas after that that's currently the plan so he's got a potential four games in 75 hours where he's spending most of those 75 hours on a plane so that's that's gonna be fun for him enjoy that one sunil um but they've also got dre russ jason roy lockie ferguson uh, Zamps and Riley Russo. So that's a pretty decent set of players, I would say. Mm. And actually, yeah. they've got one of the more interesting sets of local talent as well. So um, Ali Khan, I don't know if you recognize that name, but he's... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. IPL. Yeah, p- exactly. Pacer picked up a, a contract in the IPL. You'll never guess who with, Jack. KKR. KKR. He's also um, been with the Trimbaker Night Riders and, um, and the other one as well. One of the other ones. He, he loves them. They're... Unmukt, Unmukt Chand um, is another guy. So he scored 100 in the Under-19 World Cup final for India against Australia and has had stints in the BBL and the BPL. So he's got a little bit of um, pedigree. And then Gajanan Singh has an ODI century against the West Indies for the USA to his name. So there's there's a few guys there that actually, um, you know, uh, got a bit about them. And not only have they got that, they've got the best-named player in the competition, Jack. Shadley Van Schwalkwick. Very good. I think that's how you say it. Probably got it right. Very good. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, they could yeah, do well. I forgot that. the fact. I forgot the fact. What Jack. was the fact? What was the fact? Get the fact um, in. In LA, it's illegal to lick frogs. Um, so not a place there to find go. Prince Charming. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's mind-blowing, that is. Yeah. Um, Max, we had a few questions in about this. Um, one of them was about sort of what the long-term plan was. So I, I think just to sum that up, I talked about that a little bit in advance. I think the idea is that they're going to play at the stadiums that they've got for the first two years till 2025. And then they are actually going to take the show on the road and play it around the country if that part goes yeah, well. Yeah, so I so think they... the, the teams have sort of said they're going to build stadiums, haven't they? In their, yeah. In their yeah, a lot of them with like partnership with colleges and stuff like that. Yeah. So it'll be like a baseball slash cricket pitch. But Dropping pitches interesting. and stuff, I suppose. Yeah, I think, I think that's... That's good for infrastructure for yeah. cricket. Well, it's nice that they've um, got other... a blueprint for the future, isn't it? That's the... Yeah. Uh, other questions we had. Um, do you see Major League Cricket bringing American cricketers into the limelight like the 100 did for lesser known cricketers in England? Um, well, I think for sure is the answer to that. We've got a little yeah. bit less time, so I don't think we need to go into these in loads of detail. Yeah. But I, I mean, it's I gonna, think... there'll be guys that no one's ever heard of that will be doing things against some of the best players in the world and you'll sit up and take notice. For sure. Exactly. Um, we've also been asked to comment on a couple of things. One, that the, the first round of games, or I think next week's fixtures, are going to be played in the middle of the day when it's supposed to be 45 degrees in Dallas. Mm. Um, that's pretty mad. Uh, they've sold a lot of tickets. I don't know if they'll sell out with, with that weather, and I don't know what the crowd will do, because it's quite an open-air stadium. I'd hate to be a player too, because that will be incredibly hot. Um, I, I guess they'll just have to sort of get on with it. I mean, like, it's, it's climate change, isn't it, for you, basically? Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, second one was, what do we make of the Ambati-Ryudu situation? 
Um, so yeah. he's had to pull out of the tournament and and the BCCI have sort of rushed out some nonsense about players having to have a cooling off period of, of I think, a year before they're allowed to play in overseas tournaments. After now, retiring I, from... Yeah, Indian yeah, after retiring from the IPL, yeah. Now, I think it's sort of ridiculous, particularly in a player like Ryadu's situation. He went out, he won the IPL in his final season. It was all great. And then they've, um, you know, made him come back well, made he sort of banned him from from playing in this tournament for for no real gain. It's, I don't think to Indian absolute cricket. Absolute nonsense. I can see. I think I can see why you're doing it. Right. I guess it's there to stop someone who's 28 being like, right. I'm done with Indian cricket. I'm going to go and tour the world and make a load of money, and not play in your game and not you know win you well yeah money and revenue. That's that's obviously what the the point behind it is. And and okay, that's fine protectionist but you can understand it but for Ambati Ryadu I mean come on like let's have it some let's have some common sense about this the guy has played in the IPL for how like what 16 15 years, years? Yeah. Uh, I mean well it's, it's, when I was, yeah I don't know how IPLs they've been um that many IPLs yeah. yeah like it's 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 absolute nonsense and like, I think even just, it's a player who's 28 yeah. If they want to go off and play somewhere else, because if you know if you're an Indian domestic player and you are on fifty lakh to play for KKR as a bench rider, you're going to get that for at yeah. least three different teams also, around the world. It doesn't clash with the IPL or any Indian cricket. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, there's, it's there's about an Indian it's test about match in the West Indies at the moment, but not, he's not playing in it. <laughs> I think. I think it. Uh, yeah, I think it, it's about setting a precedent. Obviously, yeah, I think stupid, there are a couple of reasons. Stupid why he can't just play even though he's retired one i don't think india would issue a, an noc and then that would yeah. put major league cricket in a difficult situation and two if Ryder ever wants to work in media or coaching or whatever in india um you know this is the quickest way to get blacklisted is to yeah. is to break that rule so i think it's, no, it's, it's it sucks you know, for him it's ridiculous yeah. but the rules are i think yeah, i think completely ridiculous i think the whole rule is is dumb and it's uh, I hope I hope in the next few years, to be honest, that some players do just break it and go and play yeah. in, in these tournaments. And um, because the reality is, if you're a lower tier Indian player, you will get money in Major League Cricket, and you will get money in you know the yeah. T10 well, League, he, he and you'll of... get money in the UAE, and that will be more than you'll get to playing yeah. domestic cricket in India. And you're not going to get a media gig afterwards because you're a low level. IPL player so I mean you can yeah, compare but, it a bit with Jason Roy he negotiated with the ECB out of his contract to go and do it because he's going to make more money doing that in, for three well, weeks well that's it but and that I mean everyone's to... fine I mean, that's like that's not a big deal everyone was sort of fine with that just like have a growing up conversation yeah I, I think that brings us on to our final question which is what kind of a threat do you think this is to the English summer Max I, I don't think it's a threat at all um Obviously, it clashes with finals day over the weekend, but um, as you'll see, Sunil, Sarai, Sunil Narayan is flying between the two, as, as is the current plan. So, um, I mean, obviously, the, his you know, um, responsibilities to Surrey are, are holding, holding sway. I, it's such a short tournament as well. It's three weeks. Like, it's not going to, you're not going to suddenly have a bunch of guys going over to Major League Cricket and not playing for their counties for the entire year like I, I don't think it's a big deal and um, yeah it's it's just um i think you know it's it's a good it's a good thing i think getting cricket to to america is is a positive thing and i think it's a better time to do it now i mean you've got the, the world cups there next year as well so it's, it's the perfect opportunity if this has any vague level of success and engagement to follow up so um i, I think it's i think it's fairly exciting and i, I like um I like the oh, yeah. I, I, mean, I hope it goes well. I would say it's a very low threat to English cricket as it stands. It's three weeks. Um, is it even three weeks? It might be two and a half weeks. It's it's so short. And even if it expands out to a month, like there's plenty of time for it to fit in around the hundred and stuff like that. And yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't see a mass exodus of English players to go and play, and even though they are being well remunerated. Um, the, the, the yeah. good ones, but they are well remunerated for playing for England. So, kind of balance that. Maybe I'll be wrong about that. Maybe like all yeah. cricket. Maybe will it'll be. It might be you know, competition for overseas players between the hundred and major league cricket. I yeah, so that's the I, I, that's the. 
biggest area of threat potentially but i i actually don't even think i mean that is certainly an issue but i think that the business model for tournaments like the 100 and the big bash should not be to compete for andre russell's services um <laughs> i don't i don't think that the crowd care whether andre russell is playing or not um to to, to be perfectly honest so just us um yeah right let's um let's take a quick break and we will come back with part three which will be a little rundown of the mpc world cricket committee's recommendations for the future of the sport all right 